In April 2014, something strange happened in the Java world. A fully functioning web application, complete with a REST endpoint and embedded server, was posted on Twitter. The entire thing fit inside a single image. To most Java developers, that wasn't just impressive, it was unthinkable. Java had long been synonymous with verbosity, configuration, XML, WR files, deploying to heavyweight servers, boilerplate that never seemed to end. So when the Spring team unveiled a tiny JAR file that could run with just Java JAR, it raised a question. Had Java just gotten fun? Before Spring Boot, building Java applications was slow, repetitive and overwhelming for newcomers. Even basic web apps needed layers of XML config, serblet containers, and countless moving parts. Spring Framework helped, but it still required deep knowledge to wire everything correctly. Configuration was flexible, but not fast. The story of Spring began much earlier, in 2003, when Rod Johnson released the first version of the Spring Framework. It was a direct response to the complexity of J2EE, a lightweight container that made dependency injection, AOP, and application architecture far more manageable. Spring became the dominant force in enterprise Java by offering flexibility and modularity, but with that power came complexity. By the early 2010s, the framework's depth had become a double-edged sword. In 2012, a developer named Mike Youngstrom opened a feature request on Spring's Jira board. The title was simple, allow Spring Web MVC to run without web.xml. It seemed minor, but it was the seed, because under it was a deeper frustration. Why can't Java just start up and run like scripting languages? The Spring team took the idea seriously, and in just 18 months, it grew into a full framework. On April 1, 2014, a date usually reserved for jokes, Spring Boot 1.0 was released. But this wasn't a prank, it was a manifesto. Just run, no external app servers, no boilerplate, no XML, just a main method, and you are live. This wasn't just a new library, it was a reimagining of how enterprise Java should work. Embedded servers instead of deployments, auto-configuration instead of manual wiring, sensible defaults instead of verbose setup. Java suddenly was developer-friendly again. The secret wasn't new APIs, it was empathy. Spring Boot's designers led by Phil Webb and Dave Sire didn't just optimize for power, they optimized for how developers actually work. Evangelists like Josh Long brought the message to global audiences, live coding REST apps in minutes at conferences and making Java Jar feel like a superpower. By building on the foundations of Spring Framework, but stripping away the ceremony, they let developers skip the infrastructure busy work and get straight to the logic that matters. And this wasn't just for hobbyists. Production readiness was baked in from day one. Spring Boot's magic came from opinionated design. You didn't need to configure a soldat. It just assumed you wanted one. You didn't need to pick a JSON library. Jackson was already there. If H2 was on the class path, it gave you an in-memory database by default. Behind the scenes, it was deeply complex. But for the developer, it felt simple. And that was revolutionary. Spring Boot didn't just reduce boilerplate. It eliminated friction. You started building features on day one, not fighting with infrastructure. This was a massive shift, not just in tooling, but in mindset. Developers didn't just use Boot, they trusted it. Spring Boot also introduced Spring Initializer, a web tool where developers could generate a fully functioning starter project with the click of a button. That too became an icon. Today, start.spring.io generates millions of projects each year. It became the default starting point for the entire Java ecosystem. And in the early days, Boot even supported Groovy-based scripts, letting developers create full web apps in a single file. It was whimsical, but powerful, and it proved that Java could be elegant. What makes Spring Boot feel so effortless? Underneath the simplicity is a sophisticated engine of conventions. At its heart are starters, curated dependency bundles like Spring Boot Starter Web or Starter Data JPA. These bring in all the right libraries and configurations so developers don't have to hunt them down. Then comes auto configuration. Boot inspects your class path and environment and automatically wires up beans and services using smart defaults. If a certain library is present, it activates what you likely need. If you override it, Boot steps aside. This behavior is driven by conditional annotations like at conditional on class and at conditional on missing bean. It's not magic, it's rules. Add in embedded servers like Tomcat, Jetty, or Undertow, and your app becomes self-contained. No deployments, just run the jar. It's a quiet orchestration that does the right thing until you say otherwise. The result, applications that work out of the box and stay flexible when you need control. That quiet release, simple yet powerful, made production-ready apps possible with almost no setup. Today, that same spirit lives on in the age of AI. And with so many tools out there, buying them one by one, it adds up fast. That's where chat llm.abacus.ai comes in, a unified platform where all the leading language models are available in one place. You get access to chat GPT-03 Pro, GPT-4.1, Claude Sonnet 4, Gemini 2.5 Pro, 
Croc 4, Deep Seek, and others, with Root LLM smartly choosing the best model for each prompt. It's not just text generation, you can create images using Flux, Ideogram, Recraft, or ChatGPT's image model, and generate videos with tools like Kling, Runway, and Halo, all from simple prompts. There's a humanized feature that rewrites AI text to sound more natural and bypass detectors. You can even create full presentations, research reports, or build complete websites and apps using DeepAgent. And for coders it includes Code LLM, an AI coding editor built right in. All this for just $10 a month. Visit chatllm.abacus.ai or click the link in the description to explore it now. By 2018, Spring Boot 2.0 was released. With support for reactive programming, Kotlin, and improved monitoring via Actuator, it showed that Boot wasn't slowing down. But something else was happening. The world was going microservice and Spring Boot was already there. Because it bundled everything into one executable jar, it was tailor-made for containerization, for Docker, for Kubernetes, for deploying dozens or hundreds of services independently. Suddenly, Spring Boot wasn't just a tool, it was an enabler of modern cloud architecture, and adoption exploded. By 2023, surveys showed Spring Boot was the default for most new Java projects, with some estimates placing usage above 70%. Boot starter modules, auto-config, health endpoints, and embedded server model made it the easiest path to stand up independently deployable services. Even Google Cloud, Azure, and AWS all created specific Spring Boot integrations, recognizing its dominance in enterprise development. Spring Boot wasn't just a developer's favorite. It became a cornerstone for the world's most demanding companies. Netflix used Spring Boot to power parts of its back-end microservices. Alibaba scaled massive e-commerce infrastructure using Boot under the hood. Financial institutions, telecoms, airlines, all embraced it. Why? Because it worked. Because it let teams move faster without giving up reliability. And crucially, because it came with a thriving ecosystem, Spring Security, Spring Data, Spring Cloud. The whole stack integrated seamlessly, and Spring Boot sat at the center. Open source contributions exploded. By Spring Boot 3.0, over 150 contributors had shaped the release, and the Spring team made sure releases were predictable, backwards compatible, and cloud-friendly. Spring Boot wasn't a niche framework. It was infrastructure, powering everything from startups to billion user platforms. But with success came criticism. Some said Spring Boot was too bloated, that it started too many things by default, that developers didn't really understand what was going on under the hood. In trying to do everything, was Boot now doing too much? And in a world of serverless and native runtimes, did Spring Boot still make sense? Frameworks like Micronaut and Quarkus positioned themselves as leaner, faster, more cloud-optimized, and in some benchmarks they won. Spring Boot was no longer the disruptor, it was the incumbent, and that meant it had to adapt. In 2022, Spring Boot 3.0 marked the start of a new era. Java 17 baseline, native image support with Graal VM, full migration to Jakarta, experimental support for coordinated checkpoints and virtual threads. Spring Boot was adapting fast. Version 3.2 even added support for Project Loom's virtual threads, allowing high concurrency without reactive complexity. Boot wasn't resting on its reputation, it was evolving with the platform. The Spring team also tackled cold starts and startup performance head-on, embracing coordinated checkpoint restore and optimized container image builds. Spring Native, once experimental, was folded into the core. The result? A Spring Boot app could now start in milliseconds, a requirement for cloud and edge computing. Spring Boot today powers everything from startups, to banks, to billion user services. Behind the slick demos and auto-config magic is a massive ecosystem, over 50 official starters, a fully integrated metrics and observability stack, a growing community of contributors and evangelists. It's the default starting point for modern Java apps, not because it's trendy, but because it works in production. At scale, across industries, Spring Boot is also the foundation for Spring Cloud, the umbrella of distributed systems tooling used for service discovery, config servers, gateways and tracing. It's the skeleton beneath many cloud-native Java stacks. Even VMware's Tanzu and modern Java platforms use Spring Boot as a core primitive, reinforcing its role as infrastructure, not just framework. And unlike some frameworks that fade after a few years, Boot is still growing, shaped by its users, contributors, and a steady release train. Spring Boot didn't just simplify Java, it redefined what developers expect from a framework. It proved that enterprise software could be fast to build, fun to use, and still ready for production. Its opinionated defaults were controversial, but they won. And 10 years later, the lesson still holds. The best tools don't just give you power, they take away the pain. Spring Boot made Java joyful again, and it may have saved it. The next time you type Java jar, remember, under that command is a decade of work, thousands of contributors, and a quiet revolution in how we build software. Spring Boot didn't chase trends, it changed them, and it's far from done.